just, just a summary of section 4.6 in class today, uh, which depends on section 4.5. So just a quick review, looking at 4.5. We talked about something called the correspondence relationship. That's what this is. Whenever you see this congruence sign, that's a correspondence relationship. And once we know two triangles are congruent, we know all of the items here, all the angles are congruent, and all the corresponding sides are congruent. But we have to pay close attention to this correspondence relationship where the letters and the order of the letters indicate what's congruent to what. So from this correspondence relationship, we know angle A is congruent to D, Angle B is congruent to E, and angle C is congruent to F. And similarly, we have all of these pairs of sides congruent. And to prove two triangles are congruent, we don't really need to show all six things. So last week we talked about just needing to identify three pairs of congruent items in a given order and these were the conjectures we came up with. So today we're going to talk about the corresponding parts of congruent triangles. And this is what we did in class. There was a few questions so I'm going to just do a sample problem. This is how you should approach your homework. So this problem tells us we have a parallelogram and we are supposed to explain why triangle WZX is congruent to triangle YXZ. And so the idea is that you use conjectures to do this. And definitions. you take it in steps. So, since we have a parallelogram, we know that, for example, this ZY is parallel to WX, and we mark that with parallel symbols. But what we learn from that is we have congruent alternate interior angles. So, we wrote these out in class. And what we would say is something like this. Since WXYZ is a parallelogram, that's my abbreviation for parallelogram, we know that ZY is parallel to WX. We also know that WZ is parallel to YX. And because of parallel lines, like this set right here, we know we have congruent alternate interior angles, so those angles marked in red. So we could say, so angle YZX is congruent to angle WXZ. And when we write a proof, we're going to go even farther and say why that is. Um, and we'll do that in a minute. But first, let's look at the second pair of parallel lines. That's this line. Here's the transversal and this line are parallel. So 
we know that this is an alternate interior angle with this. So since WZ is parallel to YX, we know angle WZX is congruent to angle YXZ. And the reason for both of these statements, the reason for both of these statements is because alternate interior angles, which I'm going to abbreviate, of parallel lines are congruent. And you might even see me write it like this. Since the lines are parallel, that implies the alternate interior angles are congruent. So kind of a short shorthand. So again, we're trying to explain this. So we're really close. And to explain that, we're going to use the same segment property. So we're going to say, in addition, we know that ZX is congruent to itself because it's the same segment so that tells us that triangle W Z X is congruent to triangle Y X Z by Angle side angle. Whoops. Angle side angle. So the new thing would be to show or explain why. any one of the other pairs of corresponding parts are congruent. So for example, I can explain why angle Y is congruent to angle W. So this is the new learning here. I can conclude that angle Y is congruent to angle W. So it's really just one new step because the corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. So tonight, what you're trying to do is journal a little argument for each of the problems on the worksheet. So, for example, problem six, you're given M is the midpoint so of WX, 
so you would mark that. And it's also the midpoint of YZ, so you would mark that. And then you're going to write an argument that leads to Y w y is congruent to zx and on the left is a sample argument so first you want to show why the triangles are congruent and explain And then you're going to use the corresponding parts conjecture. And then you repeat that process on number seven. And that's a paragraph proof. So you'll repeat that process for number eight and for number nine. And then. That's it. That's your homework.